Well, thank you so much for joining us on this Trinity Sunday. We're so excited to be with you here today. You know, in this time of pandemic, it can be really hard for us to know how to evangelize. And that's something our church is really passionate about is sharing our faith. One way that you can do that, of course, is to share this mass and share our content like our kids programming and student programming with those that you love. You can do that through Facebook, through YouTube, or however works best for you and the person you're sharing it with. Because let's be real, the world needs a lot of love these days. Yeah, and actually speaking of love, uh, this Sunday uh, our uh, secretary Hannah celebrates her 40th anniversary uh, with her husband Dave. And so we just want to give a shout out to, to Hannah and Dave uh, on their anniversary. So that's really exciting. And just something else that's a little bit exciting that's coming up on Corpus Christi, the Feast of Corpus Christi. So to celebrate, we want to do something a little bit extra special. So in the parking lot, we're going to be having parking lot adoration. And so that's Saturday at 5 to 6 p.m. And uh, yeah, just like last week with confessions, just follow the signs and the instructions. And we really can't wait to see you there. It's going to be awesome just to, you know, spend some uh, some time, some face-to-face -face time with our Lord in adoration. So hope to see you, see you there. Well, without further ado, let's begin in worship. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather together today to celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. That is the solemnity of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A perfect unity, one God and three persons. We begin all of our prayers with the sign of the cross, the sign of our faith, invoking the Holy Spirit and God the Father and His Son to be with us as we pray. So as we come together today to celebrate this Mass, let us take a moment to call to mind our sin and to ask of God's mercy and pardon. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ eleison, Christ have mercy. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name the Lord. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. He said, if now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, 
pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Glory Glory and praise praise forever. forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already for not having believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today we are continuing our series, More Than Words. We've been saying that our words matter, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And in order for us to be better followers of Christ, friends, co-workers, parents, neighbors, and spouses, and, and brothers and sisters, that we have to learn to use our words wisely. For today's message, we'll be focusing on one of those life-giving purposes for our words, that of encouragement. I've had some pretty good experiences with encouragement. Throughout the years, I'm thinking mainly of my parents who have been in my corner since day one, but also sports teams that I've been a part of where both coaches and teammates were encouraging, and my high school music teacher who was also really encouraging too. Perhaps you've been on a sports team or some other type of team or group where you might say they had a culture of encouragement. And those teams are fun teams to be a part of, right? 
but I'd assume that we've all been on teams that aren't so encouraging too. In fact, I'd bet that you're far more likely to have been part of a group that wasn't encouraging than one that was. I learned about some research done by the Gottman Institute studying the ratio of positive to negative words that we receive in our daily life, a ratio of criticism to encouragement. And the average? Six to one. For every six words of criticism, we receive just one word of encouragement. You know, I'm pretty disappointed with these results. I mean, six to one? Really? That means on average that most of us are walking around in some pretty negative environments, experiencing some negative relationships and situations. It shows me that we are starved for encouragement. We are starved for affirmation. That's the simple bottom line of today's message, that everyone is hungry for encouragement. But more than that, Everyone can be an encourager. All of us, each and every one of us. No matter what job you have, no matter what season of life you're in, your age or your personality type, you can be an encourager. In fact, I'm about to take this one step further and say that if you are a Christian, it's a command to be an encourager. That's something we're supposed to do. In the reading that we heard from St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians, we hear this, put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. In another translation, it's worded like this, encourage one another. Friends, that's a direct command. It's something expected of this Christian community, and of course, by extension, it is expected of everyone who calls themselves a Christian today. It's something that we all need to be working on and developing the habit of because everyone, absolutely everyone, is hungry for encouragement and everyone can be an encourager. This is hard, especially if it does not come naturally for you or you tend to focus on the negative or you feel awkward and unsure about how to even offer encouragement appropriately. So I just want to offer you perhaps two tips on how one can develop the habit of encouragement. First point, recognize that everyone wants to know they're not alone. You know, earlier in that letter that St. Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, he said, encourage one another. But earlier in that same letter, he says, We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. So in modern times, it's like Paul saying, Sure, you might be following our story on Instagram, where we've been sharing this huge mission trip to Asia, and sharing pictures that look great, and, and scenery that is wonderful. But don't get the wrong impression. We're having a hard time. We're really struggling. In fact, the second half of this verse continues like this. We were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. You know, there's something encouraging about the vulnerability that it takes to be honest about where you really are at. And this digital age makes it easy to hide what you're really going through and to put up a nice front, when in fact, everything is really crushing you. It's easy to do that. But if this great leader and this good man, if, if St. Paul could be at this point of his life where, where the darkness felt so dark that he despaired of life itself, well, then you're not alone either. Nobody is. Perhaps that's where you're at today. You're feeling alone. Ironically, with the current state of our world, it's all too common. Perhaps lately in your struggles, you're feeling isolated with whatever you're dealing with. Maybe you've been trying to meet somebody and to move towards a beautiful relationship, and it's slow going, if it's even going at all. 
Maybe you've been trying to get pregnant. It feels like everybody else is announcing their big news and you just keep getting that negative result. Maybe, maybe it's your finances. Maybe they're really tight this year and this virus has only made things worse. Maybe you've lost your job and you don't know how you're going to make ends meet and you feel alone in that. Whatever your struggle might be this morning, let me assure you that you are not alone. I've got my Sunday best on right now. And whenever you bump into people or stroll through social media, their facades are up. But you're not alone. We're all struggling, at least most of us are, to some degree or, or, or another. Because let's face it, life is real. And life can be so hard sometimes. And you are not alone. We might not be in the same boat, but we sure are sailing the same seas. And so the next time somebody shares their struggle with you, you can encourage them by sharing your own struggles with them in turn, because everyone wants to know that they're not alone. The second point is that everyone wants to know you have what it takes. We all have insecurities from time to time. We all lack confidence that we have what it takes, whether it be with our relationships or our career or or even with something else. But it's words of encouragement from others that can help us to believe in ourselves and tap into our true potential. You know, we've had to greatly reduce our programming here at St. Alphonsus Liguri since this pandemic hit. But normally, we would have an army of volunteers behind us who make everything on the weekend and all of our programs and groups throughout the week run smoothly. We really couldn't do much of anything here without them. And I know myself, and for all of us here on staff, that we just cannot wait until we get to work with these amazing people again. Usually the summer and the early fall are big times for us recruiting new volunteers for the upcoming year. And the single most common resistance that we run up against when we invite people to join our ministries as leaders is that these wonderful people don't think that they have what it takes, which absolutely floors me sometimes because I can see the true potential in them quite clearly. And it's like they don't see it. We hear these wonderful and charismatic, strong, capable people saying things like, I'm not a good public speaker, so I can't possibly make a difference in this church. Or, I'm not much of a go-getter, so I can't coordinate that ministry. Or the kids won't think that I'm very interesting, so I don't think I could be a good kids ministry leader. I find it difficult to make friends sometimes, so I don't know if I'm going to be a good fit for this or for that group. Or even, I don't know much about the Catholic faith, so I don't think I could be a good group leader. Everyone, absolutely everyone walks into ministry and volunteering here with one doubt or another about their abilities. But we encourage everyone to step outside of their comfort zone, to feel confident that they do have what it takes. Even the Bible addresses this common thread between us. Check this out. All scripture is inspired by God and useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. The word of God is what gives us the power we need to feel encouraged, empowered, and equipped. In short, God's word tells us that we do have what it takes. When we are familiar with the encouragement of scripture, we can speak that truth readily over our own doubts and over the insecurities of others. When we do that for volunteers here at church, I am continually blown away at what some simple words of encouragement can actually do. 
We see people stepping into roles that God has called them into with more and more confidence and joy, unlocking the potential that they have and putting their talent to work for God's greater glory. Because everyone, everyone needs to know that they have what it takes. And you never know what a few words of encouragement from you will do for someone else in pushing them towards realizing just that. So that's your homework for this week. Encourage just one person. Who can you encourage? Maybe God has brought someone to your mind already, someone you think you could encourage and who might really need it. Or maybe God will bring someone across your path this week, someone who's struggling, who feels isolated, and who's having a hard time. And you can speak some words of encouragement to them. You don't have to have some big, elaborate speech. Just call out in them whatever is true about them. Encourage them that they're not alone and that they have what it takes. If you do this exercise, it can kickstart you in making this a regular habit. Today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, that perfect communion of relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And right before Jesus' ministry on earth began, his Father opened up the heavens nice and wide and in a loud voice for everyone to hear. He said, this is my beloved Son. I love him. I am pleased with him. I believe in him. And if Jesus needed to hear those words of encouragement from his heavenly father, how much more does your wife, does your husband, do your kids, do, do your friends need to hear words of encouragement from you? Never, ever underestimate the power your words have. And those words, they can shape someone's future when you encourage them in God's word and in God's truth. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us now call upon our Father, who made us the Son and redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit, who renews us, as we present these petitions. That God will guide the Christian churches in their search for unity, so that their oneness will show forth the unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will strengthen civil authorities in their efforts to establish justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will remove every fear from human hearts, especially during these trying times of the pandemic, and fill them with that perfect love which comes from God alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bring healing to the sick, especially for those of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will bring those who have died to share an eternal communion of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will help all our healthcare and frontline workers as they deal with the coronavirus, as well as government officials trying to keep the country safe and religious leaders caring for those yearning for spiritual guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will hear all petitions left in the silence of our hearts. and for those who ask for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord God, have mercy on us and hear our prayers. Let the love which unites the persons of the Trinity shape our lives and the lives of all people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who celebrates life with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This is the offertory part of the Mass where we usually give our gift. And so if you would like to continue supporting us uh, and you would like to make a donation to us, there's a couple of really awesome ways to do that. You can visit our website at stalfonsisnet slash give and uh, you can click that link and you can make your donation that way. Or if you uh, would prefer envelopes, you can go to our office door and there's some signs there and you can drop off your envelopes in the mail slot. And so we just really thank you so much for your gift. It really helps us to do what we've been doing so far, providing awesome content for you and your family. So thank you in advance for your generosity and God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spirit and conduit, our spirit with you and your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that, in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until you come again, O Lord, until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Alphonsus Liguri, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away. Ecce Agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spoke a word you are singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so Oh 
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal, holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Hope you have a great day and a great week. Know that we miss you and we love you very much. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river. Your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason we're here. Glory.